Habitat fluctuations along the Bitterroot River from year to year can be remarkable. This map of the clubhouse pond highlights toad habitat use in both 2013 and 2014. The blue symbols feature 2013 toad encounters, while the green pins highlight toads found in 2014. Note the shaded blue area along the southwest bank of the pond. In late June of 2013, 34 males took advantage of this new habitat by forming an elongated breeding aggregation. Six knots of juvenile toads found later in the season indicate that several males successfully bred. While this floodplain habitat favored toads in 2013, this was not the case in 2014. Pronounced spring runoff in mid-May created a deluge both at the clubhouse pond and along the sloughs of the northern floodplain. Western toads bred off property in 2014. The following report focuses on toad behavior and habitat use at the clubhouse pond during the 2013 and 2014 seasons and concludes by discussing toad habitat use in the northern floodplain during the 2014 season. A large female emerges from hibernation on the clubhouse floodplain in spring of 2013. She used the same log for shelter in 2012. This toad is probably that same female. She remains silent, still, and vigilant. Next, I focus on male toad behavior in the breeding aggregation. Flattened sedge along the shore is desirable real estate, providing both a perch and a potential breeding site. Males chirp to establish a territory within the breeding aggregation. Typically, larger dominant males subsume rivals with amplexus. The weaker male initiates a release call that causes dominant males to loosen their grip. This dominant male calls out a rival and then chases him out of his territory. Territorial squabbles escalate quickly. The heaviest male submerges his rivals and kicks them away from his territory. A robust call can thwart an intruder's attempt at amplexus. That same dominant male vanquishes another rival and then approaches the camera. Territorial maintenance requires both vigilance and stamina. At times squabbles appear random and inconclusive. Success depends on seizing an opportunity. I located six knots of juvenile toads in 2013. Five of the knots contained 500 plus toads. The largest knot at the bend had over 5,000 juveniles. In late spring of 2014, the water level rose to cover the bank where the breeding aggregation had formed the year before. Flooding in 2014 enabled 12 large male bullfrogs to establish territories in the clubhouse pond. Only three male toads called during the 2014 season at the clubhouse pond. No females were noted. The three males formed a small breeding aggregation 15 feet from the shoreline. These males did not display aggressive territorial behavior. Their calls were drowned out by the much larger bullfrogs. Although gigging reduced the numbers of large male adult bullfrogs, the species still dominated the prime breeding habitat in the clubhouse pond in 2014. If you listen closely, you can hear the three toads chirping in the background. Mm -hmm. 
I noted one mated pair of western toads on May 3rd, a toad pond in the northern floodplain. This is the earliest observed coupling at MPG to date. When I returned a few days later, the swollen river flooded the northern floodplain. I found one toad clinging to a log at Toad Pond. Toads remained elusive on the northern floodplain until well after the breeding period. I located this adult female under a coverboard on Indian Ridge during the height of the spring runoff. Female toads at NPG may have abandoned courtship efforts during 2014. Alternatively, the females may have migrated to other sites. In a 2008 study, Schmetterling and Young tracked one female western toad that migrated 13 kilometers in western Montana, although the mean in their study was 2.9 kilometers. Many of the female toads at NPG may have migrated to the Woodchuck Reservoir south of the property boundary. A large breeding event occurred at the reservoir in 2014 but the owner denied access to the site. I found this lone juvenile hopping across Woodchuck Road. Thousands of his brethren were smashed in the process. Toes did successfully breed across the river at the state parcel in 2014. I was surprised to find this male on a warm July afternoon. Outside of the breeding season, toad activity tends to be nocturnal on the floodplain. Diurnal activity during the late summer makes the species susceptible to desiccation. A wider array of predators are also active during the daytime. Nocturnal activity was pronounced at the northern slough in late summer of 2014. Often at night in late summer you'll find one or two large toads just floating the northern slough with seeming abandon. They don't seem to have much to worry about. This adolescent female stays close to the water's edge. Her smaller size makes her susceptible to predation in deeper water. She must also be wary of predators that prowl the shoreline. This large female hides on the bottom of the slough in deeper water. Feigning a rock and avoiding movement may be her best defense against a raccoon. Western toads do not need to submerge themselves to hydrate. They rely on dermal absorption via loose, vascularized skin along their inner thighs. This is known as the seat patch. The seat patch consists of muscle fibers that draw on water via capillary action. The network of muscles in the seat patch may also help toads contract their ventral side away from surfaces which are too warm. The seat patch ultimately enables toads to take advantage of shallow water sources. If necessary, the seat patch can also help them hydrate while they seek ideal thermal conditions via solar radiation.